Hello everyone, this is Tim here from InstaCluster. Welcome to another episode of InstaBlinks. Today I'm here with our VP of Product Management, Paul Wilbury. Paul, thanks for joining me. Hi there Tim, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you mate. Very well indeed. Today we're going to be covering off a, a few quick uh, product enhancements that we've released to our portfolio. We're looking at customer initiated resizes, managed Zookeeper, uh, PCI for Elasticsearch, and managed mirroring for Redis. So Paul, with that, I hand it over to you. Customer initiated resizes is the, the first uh, feature I wanted to quickly talk about. So this is a new feature that we've released for our Kafka and Elasticsearch customers running on AWS that allows them to do any to any vertical scaling of their clusters on the managed platforms. The big step here is this is a request that the customers can raise themselves and doesn't require any um, intervention from our support team. So the turnaround time is really quick. So great use case example would be you've got a uh, period where you know you need to scale your cluster. Coming up to that, your as a user of uh, the Insta Cluster Managed Platform can log on to the console or the API and request to resize your cluster yourself. Um, it's going to go through the process of checking um, that it's safe to proceed and go and execute that um, resize operation. It's a really cool feature, just allowing your customers to manage their cluster a little more independently themselves and um, scale, whether it's bigger nodes or more disk or both of them at the same time. Well, and is that for all of the technologies we support or is that just for selected uh, so ones? Right now, we're just looking at Apache, Kafka and Elasticsearch offerings. Um, we've definitely got it in the roadmap for the coming quarter to add in Cassandra and Redis support. For our existing Cassandra customers, we've already got um, resizable nodes available so you can already do some scaling. Fantastic. No, I think that's super important. Um, you know, I work with a lot of customers who just need more automation in that in that regard, especially with um, cyclical kind of applications like a lot of our customers have where they're responding to Black Friday events. It's uh, it's super, super critical. Yeah. And Fantastic. we always know that data is growing, so you slowly need to make things bigger so you can do that yourself now. Exactly. Okay, fantastic. Now, moving on to Manage Zookeeper. Tell me about it. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, some of our customers may be aware that uh, Zookeeper is a component of um, Apache Kafka. Um, and where we've basically seen is there's a market out there for customers who are wanting to run other Apache projects. So, Flink and Pino as an example. Um, and to run these applications, you need Zookeeper um, running in the background. One of our customers had kind of begun conversations with us and we jointly agreed that, yep, this is a, a problem that we can solve together. So we're making managed Apache Zookeeper uh, available as an offering on our platform. So customers can run it by themselves and let them just concentrate on running um, whatever the open source application is. So Pino, Flink as an example, and leave the management of Zookeeper, which is kind of, again, you have to manage one thing rather than two. Yeah, I, I've heard from a lot of customers that man managing Zookeeper themselves is a, a bit of an overhead that, uh, that they'd rather avoid. Uh, so it's, it's good to see that. And I think it's also a pretty cool story about InstaClusters turnaround in terms of listening to customers and, and getting to market quickly. Usually if things are a big enough pain, it, it means that some other uh, organizations are probably facing something similar. Just like all of the other products here, like it's a SOC, SOC 2 compliant, it's available on the console and the API, and we're supporting it with SLAs of uh, four nines for availability, so yeah. Fantastic, awesome. And so speaking of, uh, you know, Enterprise ready and, and secure. The, another big update is PCI certification for Elasticsearch. Yes, um, was lucky enough to work very closely with the uh, team when we did our initial uh, PCI um, certification for our Cassandra and Kafka products. 
um, and we're happy to announce that we're now um, certified with Elasticsearch and Kibana as a PCI offering. So PCI is that gold standard of um, security out there in industry and um, it's been a very big and significant piece of work to make sure that our Elasticsearch um, offering on AWS is also. Fantastic. So so just to clarify that, that is that capability and that security standard is at the moment just available over AWS Cloud? Yep, that is correct. Like it was the case with our PCI offering where we made changes to the platform and irrespective if you're a PCI customer or not, um, everyone saw the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. It's probably worth calling out that for Elasticsearch users out there, we now have the ability to have SSO for Kibana. So Kibana is the user facing front end for Elasticsearch that most people would be familiar with. It's a great feature now that you can hook up your enterprise's auth provider to Kibana and just make it simple and easier to log in and use. Just a, a, a quick call out on that as well as anyone who's been up to the news with Elasticsearch recently is that we'll be expecting a transition um, with, the, with the latest licensing to OpenSearch, which is going to also be uh, released by, by AWS. Um, and this is going to be the open distribution of Elasticsearch moving forward. And so, you know, Instacluster already gaining the PCI certification over this is you know, a really good testament to ensuring that enterprises can pick up the open distro in a managed capability straight away. Yep, so we're actively working um, on that. that it's, a, it's a hard fork of open distro for Elasticsearch to yep. open search. And um, so moving on to the last one, I know that this is a fairly recent one out of the gates, but tell us more about this managed mirroring for Redis. For Redis on the Instacluster platform, we've released into preview um, what's called managed mirroring. So what this is um, allowing would be kind of looking at two specific use cases of high availability for Redis or localized caching. So being able to uh, redirect the writes to a second location. One of the big key messages to take away from this one, this is a feature that we do see in Redis um, labs in their enterprise offering, mm -hmm. but this is a closed source, and very complex feature. Yep. Um, the approach Instacluster has taken here has been deploying this as a, a lightweight product and it's been open source in Q3 th this year. So if you're a customer who's keen to know and find out more, we can provide the source code to you, all these kind of things um, in full transparency and that's the path that we're, we're yep. taking here. Yeah, fantastic. And so just to clarify one point you made there, you, you mentioned this is for high availability scenarios um, where it can be deployed across different regions. So if we if we take this to an AWS example, um, are we talking about deploying this over multiple availability zones or are we talking about geographically uh, separate data centers? So geographically separate data centers, okay. So okay. two regions. So. Okay. A great example that we're seeing would be for customers in the States that they're able to have um, applications running on both sides of the continent okay. and being able to use our mirroring to replicate data. Okay, so it's not only high availability, but it's really disaster recovery capability as well as the added benefit of lower latency because you've got your closer to the, to the end customer. Okay. Yeah. And if we're real thinking about it, like if you're looking at Redis, you're generally looking for the caching benefits. And with those caching benefits come the improvements um, that you're seeing in latency. Use mirroring to make sure applications that have clients on both sides of the continent, we can make sure the data is replicated across there and they're able yep. to 
see that latency, those latency benefits. Uh, it's nice to be able to offer, you know, five nines of availability without five zeros attached to the price tag, which is a pretty cool uh, advent that uh, open source has enabled. So, yeah. Paul, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure to chat with you and, and I look forward to the next product update. It's been really great to see, you know, the, the work that the InstaCluster team have been doing to make you know, real time distributed data layer technology that's open source, uh, accessible to everyone. So thanks very much, Paul. Yeah, Ben, um, kudos to all the teams of devs who've been working behind it to make this happen. Um, they did a, a brilliant job there. So thanks for Fantastic. having me. Awesome. All right, Paul. Thanks very Happy much, mate. Bye. Bye.